think of a country any country and I can almost guarantee you that there's a Jamaican living there have you thought of French Guyana yeah no maybe well there is a Jamaican living there. Her name is Kenise Lawson and she's an English teacher doing an awesome job with her students. But Corona, that, that's the response to a lot of things. But Corona, Corona has thrown not just her but teachers around the globe into an online setting. And while there are many pros, there are cons as well. We're going to find out her story, what it's like being in French Guyana during a pandemic and also how it has been teaching online. This of course is Just Ruth and Company, the Jamaican podcast that shares the raw accounts of success, failure, love, relationships, societal, financial, mental health issues and all the others in between, giving you helpful tips and advice on how to live your best life possible. Thank you, Kenise, for joining me for this program. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. In spite of what's happening around us, I'm fine. Despite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it as hot in French Guyana as it is in Jamaica? Because I I'm boiling up and it's not just because of what I'm wearing. <laughs> Look nice, bright and colorful though. That color suits you. Um, it's not, I don't even know how I'm going to manage this interview. I like to gesticulate when I talk and right now only the left hand is, um, is decent. <laughs> Like it's, you, you, see, you see, it's one of the things that Corona has caused. <laughs> we will get into that later on. Um, it is, it's not hot today because it's raining. Um, I think we are in the rainy season, I'm not sure. Usually it's very humid. T generally speaking, French Guyana is, in my opinion, 10 times hotter than Jamaica. But today I am quite happy because it is raining. And so my bed is calling me, but... Um, Right after this, right after this, you can go. You, you can go right ahead. And for persons, as I would have mentioned earlier, Kenise is a wonderful, wonderful teacher. She's so talented in many ways, but she is currently a teacher in French Guyana, an English teacher doing very, very well. And um, some persons may be like French, French Guyana. Where's that? Where's that, Kenise? Kenise, where are you? <laughs> I remember when I came here, a lot of people thought it was in Africa, and I was like, no, it's in South America. So we are sandwiched between um, Suriname and Brazil in South America. But we are an overseas department of France, so um, we are under France's government. Okay. And as it relates to the teaching now, or maybe I should start at the effects of Corona. Right, well, let's start there, then we'll get into the teaching. Because you're a teacher there, clearly most persons would realize that, hey, we're going to find out how online teaching is treating you and oh, oh, you'd rather be in the classroom, actually. But before we get to that part, um, what, what's, what's really happening in French Guyana? There's a, there's a lockdown as it is in Jamaica? Um, we, have a, we, well, we have been under lockdown since March 16, thereabouts. Um, the president called for a lockdown, he said, basically, we are at war. That, those were his words. Um, and so we have been on lockdown since March 16, 17, thereabouts. I, I can't quite remember. It has been so long. Um, and we, uh, but things are very strict here. Very stringent measures have been put in place. So in our lockdown context, in, in our lockdown context, we aren't allowed to, to go outside unless we have a specific document. I have a copy of the document, and on this document, there are only six reasons so which we're allowed to go outside. Um, so since we have been on lockdown, I've only gone outside twice. Once to go to the supermarket, once to go to the market, and the market was a whole new experience because um, it wasn't at its regular location. It was at a stadium in this big parking lot. Um, only three persons were allowed at a stand at any given time. There were barriers in place. It took an eternity. But uh, that's what we had to work with. Um, so far, let me look at the stats very quickly. Well, today, um, according to, I don't know which website this is, um, we have had our first death. So that's the latest in the news. So far, we have um, 97 cases, 97 positive cases. Um, 69 persons have recovered. 
Uh, we have eight persons in hospital. And well, yesterday we had two persons on life support. One of, uh, well, no, one is on life support and the other one has passed away. Wow. So that's, the that's it. So it seems to me that persons there are really following the rule because you can always put strict rules in place. It doesn't mean that persons will follow them. Um, how do you, I mean, you're locked in, <laughs> there's not much you can see, but from the little you can see through your windows or what you can hear from your friends, um, are most persons following the rule to do what they can to flatten the curve? I've had, well, I've heard mixed, mixed stories. I've heard um, persons saying people aren't respecting the rules and regulations. People are actually outside. Where I live, I don't see much. Um, I see a lot of trees, which is quite normal here in French Guyana. <laughs> But um, when I look in the parking lot of my apartment complex, there are a lot of cars. In the afternoon, I can see parents with their, with their children. Some choose to play with them in the morning. Some choose the afternoon or the, the, the evening. Um, and I get the sense that at least where I am, people are at home. I've spoken with a few colleagues. People aren't really moving that much. But I've heard other stories. But I think for the most part, and I think that, um, the numbers show that for the most part, people are staying at home. Okay, I have gone it once and it was crowded i was very surprised the market wasn't crowded i thought i did not see a lot of cars so i don't get the impression that people are really outside more than than usual well that's good especially for persons like your mom who might tune into this episode you don't want her worrying so it's good to know that you are actually abiding by the rules and you're not the only one because when we are the victors it can't be that we're the only one because everybody is it has the potential to pass something on. So you can be like, them lucky, may I follow the rules. That's not the case. If they're following and you aren't, it's the same issue. So everybody has to be on the same page. And I think people are a bit, I don't know, like we're trying to be um, prudent. It, this is a very serious time. I mean, for example, I haven't seen my boyfriend in a long time. <laughs> And when he came to get me to go to the supermarket, because we decided to go together, and I was so excited, I was like, oh my God, I get to see him after so long. And I was running to the front seat, and he was like, no girl, in the back. <laughs> I was like, God. So even for that entire um, grocery shopping trip, which was really, it was really like an excursion. I was so excited, like, oh my God, I get to come out of the house for the first time. I was on the back seat, and I've seen a lot of people doing the same thing, like even in the cars, people are on the back seat. Nobody's really sitting. It's, it's good. Not um, for I earlier I was speaking with a more mutual friend Nazila, who is in France, and we were talking about the fact that Bizou might yeah. become a thing of the past. Ooh, girl, let us talk about that. I remember when this thing was first announced. I remember putting putting it up on my status. I was like, finally. Nobody will be coming to kiss me because people will, will try at least to be a little bit more careful. And even in that first week when everything started to go crazy, people were still kissing each other. I was like, what is wrong with you? But it's a cultural thing. It is ingrained in them. But it is, I hope after this experience, um, we, we, we won't have as much. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think it will really change. But, and for persons who might not, be sure what we're talking about. We all know the French and even some other European countries, they kiss each other on the cheek to greet. And doesn't matter who you are. Greeting, you have to look at it. it it's deeper than that. Because for example, if you it's come- It's deeper say, than that. But I mean, that's the basic understanding for persons who might not be sure what it is, but it does go deeper. And you're simplifying it for, for people to understand. If you go to a birthday party, for example, right? And you, you arrive late, you have to go around that room and kiss everybody. Oh, That's oh, everything. Oh, when somebody else comes after you, oh, oh. Yep. <laughs> just come in and say, good evening, everybody, and just move on. <laughs> but you see, I guess it goes back to what you're saying, culture. So, it, you know, sometimes somebody comes into a room and because we're just like, hey, and then somebody comes and says, well, she didn't even say hi. Um, and you're like, oh, but I just said hello. But with 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 that being a part of their culture, everybody is seen. Everybody is acknowledged. It's true. You are acknowledged. So maybe you need to come back to Jamaica. 
<laughs> but I quite liked it, interestingly. I, I quite liked it. But I'm thinking that that's one of the things that may change post-COVID. Maybe it will become an air bizoo, like, mwah, mwah, but not directly on, on, on the cheek. Talking about change, Kenis, um, a lot has changed for teachers, persons in the classroom, as it relates to... Um, the ripple effects of coronavirus um, for you as well. You are a teacher and you've been doing this from home. How's that going? <laughs> you want to know the truth? <laughs> I do want to know the truth. <laughs> it has been hell. I don't know what, well, I don't know the experience of other teachers, but I have to admit, I feel like I have been working um, overtime and, and we already work overtime as teachers. Um, but I think this experience has made us work double the time that we'd work if we were in front of the students in a physical classroom. It is extremely difficult, um, especially with uh, a subject area as, as English, because there are so many components to look at. This is not just A plus B equals C. Um, you look at creativity, uh, a student's expression. And so you have to in, in a physical classroom, you do not have the time. It's, it's completely unrealistic to imagine that you're going to correct each student's work. But when you're dealing with an online situation, what else do you do? You have students, now we're realizing that students can't work independently. Um, and so they're calling you every second. I've gotten calls like from, for example, one student 10 times for the day. Um, teacher, I don't understand. And I'm like, have you, have you read the instructions? No. Why are you calling me? <laughs> read the instructions. Okay, I don't understand. What don't you understand? I don't understand the instructions. Read the instructions to me. Okay, it's it's a it's a very very tedious process. It's a one on one situation one on one situation which you wouldn't regularly have in a physical classroom, and you have to take into consideration the the difficulty students have. Now you're realizing that in well in my context in my situation, I'm realizing that a lot of these students from this younger generation do not know how to manage technology. They were born in the age of technology, but yet they do not know how to use it efficiently. So you, you are proposing to them different platforms, different um, means of, of online work, and they cannot manage. And it's, it's frustrating, it's annoying. And I'm hoping that after this experience, the government will look back, will really assess the situation and, and really do a complete overhaul. We have to look at how many students we have per class. Um, the, the workload that we give to students, because in this current situation, there's absolutely no way you can follow your timetable, your regular timetable. I would normally have an English class three times per week. There's absolutely no way I can give my 30 plus students, that's just for one class, and I have over seven classes. So can you imagine? So How I have many to give classes? the work. I have seven classes. Wow. <laughs> and I have over 30 students per class. And this context is very it's very different because in French Guyana, we have a lot of um, overseas students. We have a lot of immigrants. I have students from Haiti, I have students from the Dominican Republic, from Peru, from um, Suriname, from Syria. So there are a lot of other barriers that we have to break in order to communicate with the students. And um, you have students who have learning um, disabilities, um, difficulties. That's a whole other thing. And then you're, you're, you're dealing with technology. It's a lot to deal with. So as I was saying, I'm hoping the government is going to do an overhaul. We really have to look at how many students we have per classroom because it's impossible. If we do have a crisis like this, again, there's absolutely no way one human being can tend to almost 200 students. It's impossible. Impossible. Um, we have to look at how we group our students. Do we group them in terms of the level that they have in a, in a particular subject area? Do we group them according to their learning disabilities so we can cater to their needs? In, in the French context, everybody's in the same place. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's, not, it's, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. It's a lot. But what I have tried to do is, and I think this is the advice I give to um, other teachers out there, develop a timetable. Um, there's absolutely no way. I don't know if there's a teacher out there who is actually functioning with um, your regular timetable. Let me know how you do it because I can. I have reduced my hours. Um, and so I have selected certain days for lesson planning, certain days for putting the work online, um, another day for correcting, another day for interaction with the students. And you really have to organize your time because if not, you're going to go crazy. And <laughs> I think I'm on the verge. I'm on the verge. On the verge. <laughs> and another part too, Kenny, it's not something that happened in several phases. 
because of this pandemic, it happened immediately. So you were thrown from the classroom into an online setting. Mm -hmm. And I think that created an even greater problem. I mean, it could not be helped. Students have mm -hmm. to learn. Teachers have to work because you do need to get paid. And as much as possible, life has to go on. So mm -hmm. I think that has created a major issue. But do you suspect or do you hope that in the future, this is something that will be looked at where it will be more online based instead of classroom based i mean based on your complaint you know it sounds like you love the classroom but <laughs> is there a way to merge both in your uh, estimation i think it depends on which subject area and i think with english and this is again my my personal opinion based on my experience i think out of this experience this entire covid 19 experience I think parents, I think stakeholders in general have come to realize the value of a teacher in the classroom. Even though we go on holidays and in the French system, we do get a lot of holidays every six or seven weeks, we get a two week break um, and people think we do nothing. Whichever country it is that you're from, if it's in Jamaica, you know, you get the entire summer holidays, people think we do nothing. But I think this experience has yeah. convinced the stakeholders that we we need to be valued. There is no way a, a teacher can be replaced by a computer. There is no way an online platform can replace um, a, a, a teacher. There's, there's absolutely no way. That is my personal opinion, because when you're dealing with students who have so many learning um, disabilities, so many, they're different in, in their personalities, in their characters, you have to deal with them differently. And when you have a classroom of, of 30 students, how do you cater to those needs online? And with, with a subject um, as English, there are so many components. You have um, listening comprehension. You have reading comprehension. Um, that's the reception side of things. But then you have the production side of things. You have writing expression. You have oral expression, continuous um, oral expression. And then you have oral expression and interaction. When you are online, how do you facilitate a, um, how do you facilitate a conversation or a dialogue with two students? How do you facilitate dialogue um, with a student, when you are only communicating with a student online, you don't get to, ex um, to, to explore the, the, the areas of, um, for example, tonality, intonation, um, facial expression, you know, the other things that go along with communication. It's a whole other, a whole other ball game um, online versus in the classroom. And when it's English, I think it is completely different. It's not A plus B plus C. I think math teachers have it easier. I'm sure the math teachers will, 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 will come yeah, at me. They will come and get me. I was never good at math, so. Uh. <laughs> but um, I think the, my conclusion in all of this is there is no way the teacher can be replaced. A teacher cannot be replaced. And we can put everything that we want to. There's so, I can give you a long list of all the online platforms that exist and how we can use it, how we can make learning fun for the students. But for me, that is supplementary. There is absolutely no way you can replace classroom experience and that one-on-one -on -one physical contact with the student. And I, and I do agree with you. Um, in my mind, though, I'm just trying to think of the ways they could both um, be merged because I do get what you're saying. Because a lot of parents... Um, for a long while, didn't even realize they knew teachers were important. They understood the role you played, but not, not to a certain extent. I think that now, now that they're home stuck with their own kids and they're wanting to tear their hair out, they want to run away, they can now realize that, hey, teachers have it really difficult. As you made mention of earlier, each student is different. So your child is quiet around the back, not saying anything. You don't even know if the person is learning anything. There's another one at the side who is incapable of shutting up. And the thing <laughs> is, you have students who have um, varying, well, varying levels of um, well, varying levels in, in English, for example. Um, and in any subject area, in terms of your ability to learn, you have students who are able to learn independently. So you can give an instruction to a child and that child is able to work alone, complete all the exercises, all the tasks that you give. Another student will struggle to understand the instructions. You have to break down the instructions. You have to 
give that child examples. So everything has to be, you have to really personalize um, each student's learning experience. Yeah. And even when you're in a physical classroom, you are, you are trying to do that at the best of your ability. The one thing I will say, online, you are able to, to, to how would I put it? You're able to personalize. If you're doing a one-on-one -on -one sort of situation, you're able to personalize, but it will get tiring after a while. You're going to be fatigued after a while because if you are dealing with a, a situation like we are in now, 30 students per class, there's no, how many hours you're going to spend with, with one student online? So well, you hours? have no time for yourself. Can I the fact how, how many hours do you going to spend? Huh? From one picnic. Let me give you an experience. Recently, I had a student. I have, um, well, let's not, let's not get into the details, but I had a student, a student who has challenges. Um, she's from another country. I won't disclose which country. And um, a lot of the students who come from that country have a very hard time speaking what would be considered the principal language here, which is, which is French. So imagine transitioning from your, um, your, your language, your native language, to, to a language that you don't understand to learn another language that you don't even know. And I spent 30 minutes on the phone with that student. 30 minutes on the phone. And that's because I cut the conversation short. On the phone, trying to break down an exercise, which I thought was fairly simple to this one child. Can you imagine doing that for 30 other students? 30. And you multiply that 30. Here, here's an equation for you math teachers out there. And you multiply <laughs> that 30 by the seven. <laughs> Good by those seven classes. It, 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 it is a lot it mm -hmm. is a lot so i mean how are you coping because this has to also take a toll on you the teacher so, oh, so this how... gives rise to the question is almost like how is your mental health yeah. <laughs> how are you coping um covid this this covid experience has been i mean there have been negative effects but i've also I'd be lying if, if, if I said I, I have not been benefiting from the positive side of things. Um, working from home means that it's, it's hard to separate home from work. That's the challenge now. But I am able to exercise. Um, and, and I'm pleased to say for the first time, I've had Sean T's 25 for, for a decade, more than a decade, and a literal decade. And at, for the first time, I made it to the second phase of the exercise program. Yes, God. <laughs> Close. <laughs> you know, I've, I've been able to exercise. I've been able to spend a lot of time in the kitchen to explore different recipes. I've been able to read, um, to study different material. I've, I've been able to save money because I've learned how to wax my own body at home. And I, I don't think I'll ever set foot in, um, in a, how was that again in English? Um, <laughs> what? I don't know. I, I don't think I'll visit an institution. You know? an institution because i have i have been learning to do stuff at home i haven't figured out the eyebrows yet but i will get there so i have been enjoying the experience enjoying is not the word that, that is not the word i want to use at the time but i have been trying to 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 make use of the positive side of things and so i've been able to to, to benefit from the extra time to do things that i would not have had time to do before Okay, so that's that's the that's the only pro. Those are the only pros. <laughs> are there any pros as it relates to the student side? Ah, I'm, I'm sorry, we were talking about students. <laughs> um, no, 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 it's fine. No, no, no. The question was no, no, no. The question was about your mental health because that is important. Because if the teacher goes crazy, if the teacher goes, you know, you know, you can't deal with it because it it is a lot based on what you're saying and based on the fact that I have worked with once single person student i know it is a lot because you're dealing with several persons several different classes and you now as you're saying it can be a, um maybe even more difficult because there has to be more one-on-one -on -one because no persons are calling you and they probably feel a little more brave because it's not like everybody's hearing them asking a question they think might sound stupid um so that can take a toll on you as well so I, I genuinely am concerned that I'm asking to do it mentally. Well, I, I, I think I'm, for the most part, I am. Um, that's such a tough question. And sometimes you never think about it until somebody asks you. I, I'm, as Shabada would say, on the borderline. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
my god I'm keep it together girl i'm trying to keep it together i am really trying to make use of the time to like i said to to to, to cook to to spend time on me because those moments yeah. are really important we, we invest a lot of time and effort into our students and so i think me time is very important i think because i have allowed myself to have some me time i think that's what's keeping me sane so for the most part i'm, I'm on the board of when I interact with my students, I really feel like I'm gonna lose it, but uh, the me time kind of levels me off, I think, for the most okay. part. Mm -hmm. That sounds wonderful. As the students, as it relates to the students, I think the positive side, because I, I have given you a lot of the negatives, but I think I have learned a lot about my students because now I'm communicating with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis. There are some of them, um, I have, I've had students who have sent me messages just out of the blue, uh, also the blues teachers um teachers teacher are you okay um how are you doing you, students who are trying to check up on you um so you're you're realizing that a few of them have some compassion they drive you crazy in the classroom but you realize some of them are compassionate um i have seen i have i have noticed that some students are are able to to, to lead because for example i have a whatsapp group i have several whatsapp groups for certain classes and i have delegated so i have students who are in charge of you know, give the information to that particular student. That student um, um, gives the information to the rest of the class. And so the communication is done that way. That way I'm not bombarded by all the students at once. And I have now learned that some of my students are, are, are leaders. Some of them are, are able to train the other students in terms of explaining to them the technical aspects as it relates to um, what to do online and on these online platforms. So I'm discovering another side of the student, which I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do before. Because you're in the classroom, you talk with them and you move on. Yeah. But, uh, um, you know, when you have time, you get to talk to them. You really get to discover another side. I'm really happy for that part. I've had students say to me, ah, oh, you're, you're like a mother to me. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're like so patch, you know, <laughs> sometimes sour, sometimes sweet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but that 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 I think is is a very good pro <laughs> as it relates to this online um, teaching. But I do get that it has to be very very stressful on teachers in 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 general. Um, before we wrap, Ken, is there any anything that you would like to add? And it it could be a message to teachers in Jamaica, teachers in French Guyana who are currently in a similar situation as you are and who might be finding it difficult if i don't know if you have any tips on you know how to survive this um i would say well this is for my teachers you have to accept that you cannot do everything if you have 30 plus students and seven plus classes you cannot do everything you cannot correct all the work you cannot you just cannot you cannot respect your timetable as you would have in a regular school year and i think we just have to accept that there are some things that we cannot do i think that's the first step the and in doing so i think we'll be easy on ourselves um a lot of us um are very high strong and we, we like to put a lot of pressure on ourselves i think that's human nature um and so we have to really take it easy on ourselves there we will gain absolutely nothing if after this experience we are stressed out we have more gray hair what 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 is there to gain <laughs> after all of this um and i and i remember earlier in the year i was stressing myself out and look half of these kids won't even be able to do the, the, the exams the way they would have the formal exams the way they, they are normally prepared now we have to actually make adjustments and we're killing ourselves so what for what so that's, take take it easy take it easy there is no point in killing ourselves there is nothing to gain in doing so so just take it easy. I, I, that is my that is my message for my teachers. Take it easy and make use of all the platforms that you have online. Delegate the students who you know have leadership qualities so that the, the load will be easier on you. Okay. And I am hoping and happy that you are taking your very own advice. <laughs> you see, I'm looking at you I, like sure I, I, you're taking your talk. own advice. The walk is not the walk is not very good. <laughs> Well, you know what? One step, one step at a time. One step mm -hmm. at a time. Kenis, it has mm -hmm. been awesome. Thank you so, so very much for joining. Keep the Thank faith. Excuse me? No, I was saying keep the faith. And ah,
I certainly will. Thank you. And you too. That thank and, you so and much. Don't pressure yourself. Sorry. I said it was a pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. And for persons who, before I wrap and go, persons um, who want to know a little bit about um, Kenise, she has a YouTube channel as well. I will link it in the description bar below. Um, Adventures of Ken, where she shares the story of being an English teacher in French Guyana and the many places she's traveled to, the discoveries <laughs> she's made. And it's wonderful. What is it, Kenise? <laughs> Wait, I have one thing to add. Teachers, a lot of us put our students before and above everything. We put work above and beyond everything. That little passion that you have had for the longest while that you have not had the time to work on, work on What's it now. Work on it now. Work on it now. That book that you haven't read that has been gathering dust, do it now. The vlog that you wanted to start, the blog, whatever it is, the clothes waiting for us that sewer from God knows how long, start to do it. This is the time. I don't think we'll ever have a moment. Yeah. yeah, I agree with you. Take that advice. Thank you for joining. And uh, we'll talk. Bye. <laughs> All right. Take care, Ken. Bye bye. That was Kenise Lawson, an English teacher in French Guy, and I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you're a teacher, I'd like to laud you for the hard work that you're putting in. And I thank God for you each day, and I pray for your strength, both mentally and physically. That's it for today's episode. Thanks for joining. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.